Welcome to Cybersecurity Basics, where we go over some easy tips and tricks to make sure that you stay safe on the internet. Today, we'll be going over two different scenarios that can happen in the real world and how you can be vigilant on making sure you don't make things easy on those who are trying to steal information. In our first scenario, we have our main character, Daisy. Daisy is a farmer who has both livestock and multiple fields that produce crops every year. Daisy is a relatively new farmer to the business and wants to be safe when she is online. One day, Daisy gets an email from her bank, Sunnyside Banking. Daisy clicks open the PDF in the email and it reads, Dear Daisy, we are updating our system due to a breach and need you to transfer your money to another account to keep your account with us secure. Please respond with your current bank account number to confirm that we move your funds safely. Daisy is worried about her bank account and the possibility of a security issue, so quickly responds back with the information needed. Daisy is alarmed when the next day she is notified on her phone that her bank account has lost a large portion of her money. Now, what do you think Daisy should have done differently? Let's back up when Daisy saw her email. Daisy reads the email and is worried about her bank account and possible security issue. She quickly calls her bank to confirm the data breach and to get more information from the bank. When she calls the bank, they notify her that there was not a breach and that the email she received was a scam and to block the sender and delete the email immediately. Daisy hangs up the phone and is relieved. She's glad that she called the bank to confirm the information from the email was incorrect and didn't act out of haste and do something that could have been really damaging. Let's go to our next example. Daisy does her bills around the same time every month. Around the end of the month, she receives an invoice PDF to her email from her co-op stating that she bought some feed and fertilizer and that she needs to send her bank routing number to transfer money so she can pay for what she owes to the co-op. Daisy remembered the talk she went to about being safe online and remembered that her co-op would never ask for her bank information because they already have it. So she got on the phone to call her co-op directly to alert them of the scam. Next, let's talk about business email compromise, BEC, or email account compromise, EAC. If you search for the 2020 internet crime report, this includes information from almost 800,000 complaints of suspected internet crime, an increase of more than 300 complaints from 2019, and reported losses exceeding 4.2 billion. Looking at the chart, we can see that BEC and EAC crime is significantly higher than any other cyber crimes. Now, how does BEC or EAC work? How it works is when hackers employ multiple tactics to try to gain access to your information. One way might be getting an email where the subject line of your email is an old password that you've used, and they use this email to try to get other passwords from you by saying that you're at risk of getting your information stolen when actually they are the ones trying to steal your information. They also might use malware, which is a way to, to try to use phishing scams to try to get more information from you so they can steal valuable information from you. Other ways is what we just saw Daisy experience with a fake email, pretending to be something that is a business that you are already familiar with, such as your bank, and then getting information from you. Others might use a phone call and try to get information and in your login credentials that way, pretending to be your bank, the co-op, somebody that you believe to be trustworthy. Okay, so now that we know all of that, how do we prevent from becoming victims of cybercrime? Number one, your bank co-op will never ask for information that they already have such as bank account numbers and information. If you are ever in doubt if an email sender is legitimate, call the bank number directly at a number you trust to verify. Make sure you create a safe password for your accounts. No, don't use your dog's name as your password, especially when you post lots of pictures of your dog on your Facebook. Use a combination of letters, numbers, and special characters to create complex passwords. Restrict Wi-Fi usage when traveling. When you d use other networks that aren't secure, hackers can hack Wi-Fi networks and get your private information. 
That is why it's important to only use Wi-Fi in secure places where you trust the network. Update your software. If you don't update your software, such as Microsoft Word, web browsers, or Adobe Reader, you leave yourself vulnerable to attacks. Lastly, back up everything. You don't want to become a victim to ransomware. You want to have your files on hand so someone cannot hack into your computer and lock you out of your files until you pay a large sum of money to get them back.